When Wave 2 of Microsoft 365 Copilot got announced last fall, there was no indication that this new approach would bring us to a seasonal rollout schedule like we see with Microsoft Business Apps. But with the recent announcement of the new Wave 2 Spring release, it seems that this is being used for inspiration. There was no glittering streamed event to highlight this release as we saw from the consumer Microsoft Copilot just a couple of weeks ago. And perhaps that's because what's now come into Microsoft 365 Copilot is more like rebadged versions of what was announced there and what has already come to ChatGPT than much that is truly new. But while many of these features might have been expected, Understanding how they will fit into Microsoft 365 Copilot is essential if you want to ensure maximum adoption and return on your investment. But before we dig into what was announced, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I advise smaller businesses on how to get the best from AI, including Microsoft's AI technologies. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. Microsoft has been on a journey between a combination of technological innovation and marketing copywriting to make the impact of AI through Microsoft 365 Copilot greater than the sum of its parts. And nowhere is this more felt than in the need for a Microsoft 365 Copilot app, something that came about by taking the existing Microsoft 365 web portal and separate Microsoft 365 app and bringing them together to be a Copilot first experience. However, this unquestionably makes more sense in the world of AI use that Microsoft is trying to sell us than the reality of Microsoft 365 use in most of the businesses I work with, even those where many team members are very well adopted onto using Microsoft 365 Copilot day to day. The first big update is in taking yet another spin at this. The Microsoft 365 Copilot app is getting a redesign, and this will be the third big UI rearrangement for Microsoft 365 Copilot since it debuted in November 2023. And while I don't like the fact that with every redesign I have to update a whole bunch of my business training materials, I do understand the need to keep iterating on this to get it right. Shoehorning the ever-growing capabilities of AI services into a streamlined UI is not just an issue for Microsoft. I don't think there's anyone who thinks OpenAI's growing list of model selections in ChatGPT is the most logical presentation for every type of user. But the balance between features and usage efficiency hasn't yet been found for any of these apps. Microsoft's new approach is streamlined. It focuses on agentic experiences to enhance your interactions with Copilot and puts control over your content, the logical outputs of your AI interactions, as well as the food that makes those interactions strong at the center of the experience too. We'll look at the specific additions this UI change leads us to in just a moment, but it's also worth noting that this sort of change, whether it's an update for Microsoft 365 Copilot licensed users or unlicensed users who are making use of included AI tooling in Microsoft 365, is likely a big modification to the Microsoft 365 portal site as well, as this is the basis of the Microsoft 365 Copilot app. This in itself wasn't made 100% clear in what's been announced, but given that those two experiences have essentially merged, it seems likely to still be the case. In my mind, it appears as if there's a tension within Microsoft between creating a holistic AI-first experience where the jumping off point to everything else within Microsoft 365 is Copilot, and the individual apps trying to load in as many AI features as possible. I like the idea of a core AI experience that then branches out in relevant ways to the individual apps. But right now, I'm not sure that's what a Microsoft 365 Copilot app achieves. And I'm not sure it will achieve that any better after this update. However, we should look at specifically what other feature updates this brings. If you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd hit the like button and leave a comment to help you get in front of more interested people. Also, if you'd like to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Notebooks allow you to bring together interaction with Copilot alongside a set of contextual grounding data from Microsoft 365 to enable you to work on an ongoing basis on common tasks, activities, or projects. This is essentially a Microsoft 365 Copilot-based version of ChatGPT's or Claude's projects. Particularly interesting in the short section Microsoft shared of what Notebooks looks like is that it appears to have a share button, meaning that it would seem that this is going to allow you to curate a set of grounding materials and then share that notebook with others. 
Whether that means multiple users can interact together with a notebook similarly to Copilot Pages, or whether it means a notebook becomes almost like an agent where each user gets their own private interaction is unclear. Copilot based search is going to be coming. However, it should be remembered that the original promise of the Copilot Semantic Index was to make improvement to enterprise search across organizations for all users, irrespective of Copilot licensing. And for many types of data, the core Microsoft 365 search has remained a more effective way to surface data than new interfaces such as Context IQ. However, building out more powerful search tools is important as more complicated interactions between different types of data exist within Microsoft 365's reach. Right now, I'm not sure enough has been explained about AI search to truly understand whether this moves the needle on the quality of search results, or if it's just a gimmicky way to stick the Copilot name in another Microsoft product. On the agent store though, I don't think it's necessary to reserve judgment. This is pretty much definitely a gimmicky way to weave current Copilot-centric language into functionality that already exists, and in all likelihood, in substance, will not change with this update. Users of course need somewhere to surface available agents, but whether that's a get agents link that takes you to a page of the Microsoft 365 App Store, or something called the Agent Store, probably doesn't matter, aside from the fact that it's yet another thing to have to commit to memory as a change. But maybe I don't have to bother trying to remember this, as perhaps Copilot will just do it for me, as at the other end of the scale of usefulness is its new memory feature. This is something that many Copilot users have been asking for and is 100% necessary to truly allow the types of relevant and contextually aware experiences Microsoft has been focused on building for the last two years. However, whereas the other features announced were at least shown briefly in video introductions, aside from memory being updated, this feature was not. We can probably guess that this will be built similarly to the updated memory that ChatGPT just released. I think that adding memory to Microsoft 365 Copilot is potentially one of the most important feature upgrades we will have ever seen to this product. But having tools that enable us to understand what's in that memory, how it's being used, and avoiding the risk of leaking sensitive data through Copilot based interactions are vital. And as far as I'm aware, zero information on this has been provided yet. There are probably some admins in regulated organizations who are living in just as much fear about when this feature drops as I am in my excitement. The Create tab is essentially a new experience that seems driven by OpenAI's new GPT-40 image gen wrapped into something that makes sense in Microsoft 365. It will be interesting to see the extent to which a unified Copilot experience integrates with this, as while turning text into an image with AI is one thing, in the context of Microsoft 365, something like a poster isn't just an image. It's maybe a word file, perhaps that is created and then saved somewhere and has some metadata associated with it and then gets shared and printed. To what extent this new experience will integrate Copilot into that next step beyond the creation of the image is yet to be seen. And the last part we really need to think about is how agents are now integrated with chat. From asking if Microsoft 365 Copilot is the right product for your business, to working out how agentic AI can amplify the ways you delight your customers, there are lots of questions swirling around AI strategy and AI adoption for all businesses right now. And while the technology is important, understanding how all the pieces fit together in a way that's relevant to your business and your people is even more so. If you need an advisor or a personal or team AI coach to start or support your journey, I offer services to help you. I work with small and medium sized organizations that are looking to maximize the benefits of AI in a safe and responsible way. And I'd be happy to connect with you to understand your situation and outline how I can assist you to succeed with this technology. Take a look at the links down below to find out more and to get in touch. The biggest visual change that might impact how users think about Copilot or how I might describe it, comes down to the fact that agents are now presented as a component of the wider chat experience, rather than an equivalent entity to the broader Microsoft 365 Copilot chat. This completes a transition from the idea that we would create custom Copilots to agents being tools that live within the broader Copilot ecosystem. Both of Microsoft's reasoning agents, analyst and researcher, are apparently now available under the Frontier program, although at the time of recording this video they had not turned up as options in any of my tenants. 
However, there is more information coming on that Frontier program, and my current understanding of it, based on this blog post, is that any Microsoft 365 Copilot license user will be able to try Frontier program early access tools, like these agents, unless that option has been turned off by an admin. However, I believe it's going to be quite that simple when I see it. Outside of that day of or near day of release, the rest of these updates are going to start dropping in May for targeted release and this rollout should be completed in June. Some features like Search will come to all users, but premium capabilities like Notebooks will be reserved for Microsoft 365 Copilot licensed users. There is no word on whether any of these capabilities will have pay-as-you-go options, including first-party agents like Analyst or Researcher. All of these updates are logical and expected given what we've seen released both in ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot Consumer, but some of them, particularly memory, are truly exciting in the context of Microsoft 365 Copilot. However, if truly we were done with this update and then could look forward to the Microsoft 365 Copilot Wave 3 release in the fall, everyone could take a breath. Leaders, adoption managers, users, everyone involved with Copilot and focus on maximising its impact today rather than trying to work out the implications of what's coming tomorrow. But that's not the case. Despite headlining this announcement in a way that implies that Copilot updates are somehow timed or managed or scheduled, the reality is that there's constant churn where there are probably 50 other changes that weren't mentioned on this list that most of us expect to turn up before any of these arrive. The value of predictability has been lost in the AI hype cycle, and while none of the features that get pushed into production every week are not valuable or are negative to the product overall, the lack of predictability is 100% a negative to managed adoption and planned administration. Just as one example, one of the services I provide is Copilot Adoption Training. And to be in a situation where over the next two months, I have utterly no idea whether what I'll be showing on screen as demos from my tenant match what clients will be seeing on screen as the experience in theirs makes that work more complicated than it needs to be. The most exciting thing about this announcement for me is the idea that it conveys that Microsoft is aiming to move to a more predictable announcement and release schedule for Copilot. We're now at a point where predictability has to be part of moving us to product maturity. What do you think? What was your favourite feature that got announced? And do you want a more predictable approach to these types of announcements? Start the conversation down in the comments. Until the next video, bye bye.